Good morning everybody, I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and today I'm giving you an under the covers tour of this Airbus H125, also known as the AS350B3E. I've been flying this machine now for a few weeks on the fires here, so I'm going to give you a tour around whilst I get it ready. And then at the end of the video, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you, so make sure you stick around to the end and uh, come for a little trip with me down to the forestry base. So usually the first place that people always want to see is the cockpit. So I'm going to go jump inside, I'm going to show you what everything does and uh, let's see what's new on the H125. So the first thing you might notice with the H125 is the noise and that's because in the Garmin G500H suite here we've got cooling fans that run to keep the screens cool. So. Uh, Unfortunately, you can have to kind of try and ignore the noise because they are quite loud, but uh, they need them to keep them cool. So we've got the Garmin G500 suite uh, with the two screens here and the second screen here. This one is a touchscreen and it's really good because it's our integrated uh, comp panel, transponder, and it's also got our GPS so we can do our direct twos on it. Works really nice, really quick. And then what it'll do, is it'll put that display information onto my screens here. Um, so it works really, really nice. Um, it's got several different kind of maps and it's also got a terrain awareness uh, function with the database that's built into it. So it's not squawking at you if you're getting uh, too low or if there's terrain coming towards you, which is quite nice if you need it. I usually turn it off because I'm usually flying around low, especially on the fires and it just starts squawking at you, which is annoying. Um, so apart from that, we've got the VEMD screens, which are in most uh, latest generation A-Stars. They work really, really nice. All the information is displayed. So we've got a TOT, our torque, and our N1 for our engine here. We've got our fuel gauge here with the actual quantity, outside air temperature. Then we've got our engine oil temperature and pressure. Then our voltage and then current coming out of the generator once the aircraft's running. We've got two FM radios here that we use with forestry or ground crews. And we've got the VHF radio integrated into here. We've also got a second one in our company that we fit here so we can listen to uh, basically three radio frequencies at the time. I can listen to like tower, I can listen to general air to air, and then I can also monitor a third frequency, which is really nice, especially when we've got two air to air frequencies like we do around here. Uh, below that we have our comp panel which just selects which radio we're talking to and then we have our satellite phone that uh, is integrated there so I can just select it, dial the number, key the mic and talk, it works really nice. The Airbus H125 has got a nice clean panel, it works really really nice, they got rid of a lot of the buttons um, so we've just got a few of the, the test buttons here so this one tests the servo hydraulics warning lights for the caution panel and the VEMDs. This one tests our engine fire system and then we've got turn our, king, our communications on and off. Turn the pulse light off on the bottom of the aircraft so that's uh, people can see us coming. And then if I want to use the uh, cargo hook, I turn that one on there. The other thing that's slightly different with the B3 is that it has a digital engine control unit, which means it's just a one button start to start it. So all I do is I reach up, turn the engine start switch from off to on, and it does its own thing. It just monitors it, lets it uh, start the engine nicely. Um, the other thing is that on the collective, we just have a twist grip, but it's just a switch. So I can just basically go from idle, click it over to flight. The FADEC takes control of the engine and just fires the engine up to flight RPM and it works really really nice. The other nice thing that I like is that down here this area is now clear. Everything has been moved to the ceiling so up in the ceiling we have the road brake and the fuel shutoff lever which is really nice. The other kind of new feature for the H125 is the EBCOW unit and the switch to test it is up here and the EBCOW is basically the, the engine backup control ancillary unit 
and basically what that does is it looks after the governor of the FADEX. So if the governor controlling the engine decides to just crap out, the ebb cow is going to take over the engine to prevent it from overspeeding, uh, prevent it from hunting, things like that. And it's all done instantly. Um, whereas before flying the old B2 A star, you had to manually control the engine using the fuel control lever um, if the governor stopped working. But now the ebb cow does that for you. So it's a nice feature on the H125. The other thing that's slightly different with this is that we now we don't have any boost pumps. We have one fuel pump which we turn on here for the start and then once the engine's running we turn it off and the engine gets its fuel from its engine driven fuel pump that is mounted on the engine so we don't have any electrical fuel pumps running anymore so Airbus have really tried to kind of simplify the E-Star and try and take out as much of the kind of fluff that you don't need um, and it works really good it's a nice clean panel nice simple easy machine to fly which is great because <laughs> I like simple so the cabin of the A-Star is pretty much the same as all the other A-Stars. Um, we do have newer seats in here. They are crash attenuating seats, so they help to remove some of the G-force in a hard landing. Uh, they are made of carbon fiber to help reduce the weight. Back seats, let's have a look. Back seats are still the same. Uh, these ones got the cushions removed because I'm working with the forestry crews on the fire and the seats are constantly up and down between moving crews around and moving their gear around. So it's kind of a pain in the rear end if you've got to put cushions in the back all the time. So at the moment they're just taken out. So their comfort's a bit, uh, a bit reduced, but hey, they've been camping out in the bush for two weeks on end. They don't care. So <laughs> the seats are removed. Um, up in the top, right up here is a camera. And what Airbus have done now is they've installed a camera that looks at the instrument panel. And it's kind of nice because it then helps in accident investigation because they can see exactly what was going on with the aircraft at the time of the incident. And also it helps cover the pilot's butt a bit more. Let's say you're flying along with a sling load and all of a sudden there was an inadvertent release of the load the way the camera looks you can see if the pilot actually pressed one of the buttons or pulled the lever on the bottom of the collective to release the load and so basically before it was pilot's word whereas now there is actually video evidence to prove that the pilot didn't punch that load off um, especially if you know somebody else got hurt on the ground so it's kind of a nice um, a nice feature that, that I like, it, it kind of covers my rear end and uh, protects me and the company, so it's kind of nice. So a great tip that uh, I got shown many, many years ago, is if you're flying around a lot and it's hot and you're not getting a chance to drink much water, put a camel back on the back of your seat. Works great, this one's like a two liter one, and I've got the, uh, the pipe just next to my shoulder when I'm flying. So when I'm flying around, I just reach over, unclip it, take a drink, clip it back, and away we go. Um, it works really good. As you can see, we've got some Gatorade and water on the floor, so I just keep it topped up throughout the day. And uh, if I get chance, I throw some ice in there too. And it really, really helps to keep you hydrated because um, especially flying on fires, there's so much kind of, it's not glass, it's, uh, you know, it's Lexan, but there's so much glass in this cockpit when the sun beats in, you get really, really hot. And uh, if you don't stay hydrated, you're going to start getting yourself into uh, dehydration. So uh, tip for all you guys, throw a camel back on the back of your seat. Okay, so coming from the cabin, we're now going to go and look on the right-hand side of the uh, transmission area. Here is the right hand side of the transmission and it's not that much different from the normal A-Star. First thing you might notice here is this thing here and basically all it is um, is an air filter. We basically just take the air coming in from the fan, comes through the filter and then it goes in through here and into the cabin. So that's kind of nice, especially when it's dusty and there's lots of pollen in the air, it uh, helps to just clean the air out. Then coming along, we've got a bit of an updated pulley 
on the belt drive for one of the hydraulic systems and that's the other cool thing about this A-Star is it's got a dual hydraulic so we've got the belt driven hydraulic pump and then we come around to the front of the engine we've got a transmission driven uh, hydraulic pump so we've now got two independent systems on the H125 so if we kind of come up here and have a look if you look at the reservoir for the hydraulic you can actually see there's two reservoirs and it's two completely independent systems they work together um, as a team to move the hydraulic servos let's see hydraulic servos right here move them together but they can work independently so if one fails the other one still gives you hydraulic pressure which is really really nice so um, you don't have to worry so much about a hydraulic failure like you do in the uh, B2s and things like that. Uh, the other thing that's kind of changed is we've got uh, an engine oil filter here and it's got a nice little red pop out on there if it goes into uh, starts to get blocked. Then we've got the uh, right hand side hydraulic system which also has a small screen filter in there and at the bottom just here is another red pop out so we can see if that filter is getting clogged too. So apart from that, that is really the only difference in the H125. You basically got the dual hydraulics and uh, we look up at the actuators because you can see in this picture here, the actuator is actually a dual actuator. So it's basically two actuators bolted back to back and because there's dual hydraulics, we don't have any accumulators on the hydraulic servos anymore, which is nice. So um, before you had maybe half a dozen movements of your flight controls before you'd start running out of pressure, whereas now you've got your backup of the dual hydraulic system. So as we now move around onto the right-hand side of the aircraft, we've got the right-hand side of the engine compartment. This one is the Ariel 2D engine and it's very similar to the previous Ariel engines used in all the other A-Stars except this one's got more power. It produces 847 shaft horsepower and for this one it's got a new axial compressor and it's got new materials in the power turbine. So you've got the axial compressor in the front here centrifugal compressor right here then you've got the combustion chamber a gas generator turbine power turbine and also it's got a longer exhaust can um, on the back end of the engine but apart from that <laughs> honestly it looks almost identical to the other Ariel engines and with it being Ariel it's a fantastic engine it just it's beautiful tons of power with this machine so as we come down the machine, one thing you may notice here, we've got an extra large heat shield covering the top of the tail boom. And that's just to protect it from the amount of heat that comes out from the Ariel 2D engine. Um, yeah, it, it pumps out a lot of heat and actually pumps out a lot of black coking on here too. So we have to clean it quite often. Um, but um, yeah, there's, they obviously needed to protect the tail rotor drive shaft a bit more. So they've come up with this bigger heat shield. Uh, the other thing on the H125 is they no longer have the tail boom streak that is sometimes fitted on uh, the B2s. They've got rid of that on the H125, they've obviously decided they don't need it. But as we come along, one thing that I have noticed is that on the back of the vertical fin is they've stuck this tab. So I'm assuming they've removed the streak and added this tab and that helps with um, offloading the tail rotor a little bit so um, that's that's new on the, the 125. The other thing that's new uh, if we come back to the tail rotor is that now we have elastomeric bearings here on the tail rotor pitch links and the actual pitch links are quite a bit chunkier too. Um, they obviously wanted to uh, make these as robust and safe as possible and that's what they come up with so we've now got elastomeric bearings on the tail rotor. So as we come down onto the left hand side of the aircraft and especially the engine bay this is where things are just a little bit different. So I'm going to go get my ladder out and we're going to go up there and I'm going to show you a bit closer. 
So this is the left hand side of the Ariel 2D engine and the main thing that's different with this is that we have the digital engine fuel control here and it's dual channel so like I said it is kind of like two systems monitoring it and controlling it and monitoring each other to make sure that the fuel getting delivered to the engine is exactly what the pilot is asking for. Um, it works really, really nicely. So if some of you are wondering what FADEC means, it's basically a full authority digital engine control unit. And it's used quite a lot in helicopters. Um, this allows me to just flick that switch and aircraft starts up all by itself. Uh, it works really nicely. We're still on a 30 second cooldown with this Ariel engine, which is perfect because there's nothing worse than sitting there for like two minutes waiting for your engine to cool down before you shut it down. So the 30 seconds is nice. It makes it easy to quickly bump the aircraft from A to B and not be sitting there running for half the time that it took you to just bump the aircraft over. So that's really nice. So the, th the other thing that's nice with this engine is that it also has the um, data being recorded by the engine control unit. Because it's a digital engine control unit, if I come in and show you into the back here, we've now got a, like a, let's see if you can see it. We've got an avionics unit here at the back and that helps to basically look at the aircraft, monitor all the uh, parameters and record them for maintenance and accident investigation, which is nice. Um, the aircraft engine, this new 2D from Ariel, has got an increased life. So before it needs to go into overhaul, the, uh, the time has been increased, which is really nice for the um, owners and operators. It also has got um, longer uh, time periods between maintenance inspections. So it just makes it so much cheaper to operate and look after. And you know, as you can see, there's not really much to it. Yeah, there's lots of pipes and wires, um, but they're just, you know, they're just part of the engine and how it operates. Uh, the rest of it is just, it's really simple and it's nice, it's clean. It stays clean, it's easy to wipe down, it's easy to visually inspect. Um, yeah, I love these Ariel engines, they're beautiful engines. So from there, we've also got a new fuel cap that's been fitted. Um, this one is really simple. You just basically just unclip it, quarter turn, and out it comes. It's, uh, it's not on a lanyard. It's, you don't need a key because, God, you snap a key off in the middle of nowhere and if, on a fuel cap. Oh, man, you are cursing. So um, this one, yeah, again, Airbus have tried to simplify everything and make get rid of all the, the crappy things on the old A-stars that cause pilots problems. So, yeah, new fuel cap. So here we come around to the left-hand side of the engine transmission. So let's go climb up and we'll go and take a closer look. So this side is quite bare, as you can see. Um, sometimes there's an air, airframe mounted fuel filter. Um, we don't have that anymore, which is nice. And, yeah, the fuel just comes up now through from the fuel tank, which the fuel tank on the H125 is also a puncture resistant fuel tank, which is nice because the plastic one in the previous A-Stars, if you had an impact and it burst, then you're going to be puking fuel out everywhere and, you know, post crash fires were horrendous. So the new fuel tank in this just makes it even more safer. Um, so the fuel just comes straight up and goes straight into the digital engine fuel control unit right there. So from the engine, it basically comes through into the torque tube here. As you can see, we've got the star drive there. Then it comes through and that's where the belt is for the belt driven hydraulic pump. And then here we have the rotor brake to slow the rotor once the aircraft has been shut down. The other difference on this side is we've got the second hydraulic filter and little red telltale button under there. So if that pops out, we know the filter is getting clogged um, for the left hand hydraulic system. And really, apart from that, that is all that is on this side. <laughs> it's, it's really simple. So as you can see, it makes doing visual inspections super, super easy because everything's clean and you can see everything. So yeah, it's oh, sun's coming out. As you can see, it's 
it's a little dusty in here. We're working on uh, wildfires at the moment. We landed on logging roads to drop the crews off, and of course, it's it's dry, it's dusty, it's sandy. So yeah, it gets. Uh... Tell you what, you always try and do videos. There's always somebody buzzing around here. Eh? <laughs> it's rude. So yeah, so here's the inside of the kind of the transmission. It goes up to the road ahead there. That you can see here one of the hydraulic servos. So it's kind of yeah, two bolted together. So you've got one on the bottom half, one on the top half, and then they're controlled together. So on here we have three. We have one here, we have one here, and we have the other one through there. So that, ladies and gents, is the Airbus H125. Now, some of you may be asking, well, how much more power does it have? How much more weight can it lift? So the B2A star that I was flying before had a maximum internal gross weight of 4,961 pounds. This one now has a maximum internal gross weight of 5,225 pounds. So that's an increase of 264 pounds. But we do have a bit of added extra weight with the tailboom heat shield, the dual hydraulics, I think the fuel tank weighs a little bit more. So lots of little things like that have added up. But internally, our gross weight has gone up 264 pounds. Externally, that's the difference. That's where it's gone up quite a bit. So now my external gross weight has gone up from 5,512 pounds to 6,172 pounds, which is a 660 pound increase. So on the hook, I can now take an extra 650 pounds. Well, ladies and gents, that is the tour of the Airbus H125. Stick around, because we're going to go and move this little baby from hit the hangar over to the forestry apron. So I'm going to get to show you how to start and how this thing flies. So the battery comes on. All the VEMDs are going to go through their uh, testing sequence. Fuel pump is going to come on on this machine. It's not a uh, boost pump like the other ones. It's just a fuel pressurization pump just to start the machine. Warning light test. We're testing all the colors on the screens, all the caution warning light panel. It's all good. We're going to test the fire. Engine fire comes up. Servo test button. Servo light goes out. And I'm going to do the accumulated test on the pedals just to make sure they're depressurized and centered. OK, everything else is looking good. All the needles are as they should be. Temperature's reading right, voltage is reading right. We start stopwatch, everything else is zeroed. Area is all clear, anti collision light is on. We're at idle, we have no governor lights on the caution water panel, so now we can start the engine. And for this machine, it's really simple. It's basically just one switch, so here we go. So the engine's firing up, TOT is climbing, M1 is climbing. Keep my finger on the switch just in case I need to turn it off in case the FADEC doesn't start the engine properly. Fuel pressures, uh, correction. Engine oil pressure is rising, blades are turning, and one is increasing nicely. As the engine spools up, hydraulics and uh, pressure lights are going to start going out. And a 67% N1, switch guard goes on, boost pump goes off. And now I can start turning on everything else. So the generator is going to come on. I'm going to cage my artificial horizon whilst I turn on my avionics on. And whilst that's happening, just check everything's good. So temperature is good, engine oil pressure is good, generator uh, is definitely working because the amperage is coming down now. Fuel fellow is looking good, and everything else is looking as it should be. So now my Garmin screens are coming on. I'm just going to sort these out. I'm just going to now turn off my terrain inhibitor, otherwise every time you come low it starts screaming at you, which is a pain in the rear. <coughs> okay now, so let's have a listen to the weather. <laughs> okay, so it's undergoing maintenance. Okay. Okay, so our lights coming on, pulse lights are coming on. I'm basically just going to flick the switch on the collective up to flight as we go through 350, turn the horn gums on, 
and at 360 it goes out. So now we're configured ready for flight. Fuel pump is off, pedo's on, pull slide is on. Everything is all good, temperatures and pressures are all good. And now we're just going to call, lift up, reposition. So a quick pull into the hover, quick check of all my gauges, everything is good. Tail is clear left and right. And I'm going to swing it around. And that, ladies and gents, is the Airbus H125. If you enjoyed this video, awesome. I love making these videos for you. Make sure you give this a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button because I've got new videos like this coming out every week. And I'll see you next time.